Good evening, everyone. We'll start the session soon. Good evening, everyone. IEEE celebrates Spells Day today, June 20th. On this day, in 1987, Spells became a full-fledged society within the IEEE. IEEE SBMBCET is celebrating Spells Day with an incredible three-day event, Technophilia. Today, we come to the last session of this event. At the end of today's session, we have a very exciting treasure hunt planned for you. So don't miss it. On behalf of IEEE SBNBCT, I welcome everyone present here to the concluding session of Technophilia. For today's session, we have with us Nikhil Matthew James, engineer at Danforth Drives R&D. He completed his BTEC in Electrical and Electronics Engineering at RIT Cortium and his MTEC in Power Electronics at VIT Vellu. He is now engineer at Danforth Drives Research and Development. Danforth Drives has been a global leader in the variable speed control of electric motors. They have the world's largest installed base of VLT and Vacon AC drives. They draw on decades of passion and experience with a wide range of industries. We extend a hearty welcome to you, sir. Over to you, sir, for today's session. Hi, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, sir. OK. Uh, thank you for the welcome. Uh, as you know, my name is Nikhil, and I'm currently working as an engineer at Danfoss Drives. So today's session, I know uh, the session name is Career Opportunities in Power Electronics. 
but i want to brush up on a few things means uh, i want to just give a basic introduction about power electronics focusing on drives and at last we will see some companies uh, that are in the field of power electronics and uh, yeah an overview of the entire subject and uh, some basics that's what i have in mind so i will move on with the presentation now is my screen visible to everyone yes sir it's visible okay so uh, our session today will cover the basics of power electronics as well as drives and uh, we'll start with a little bit of history and first we'll talk a bit about energy you know about energy and energy conversion means we have generators that convert mechanical energy to electrical energy and uh, different different means example again motors again we convert this electrical energy back to mechanical energy and transformers uh, means uh, electrical energy to electrical energy either stepping up of voltage or uh, stepping down of voltage and uh, another form of conversion when we speak about electrical energy is uh, convert conversion of this electrical energy what we have means if we have electrical energy we will need to convert it to different different forms based on based upon of our applications or our requirements for example uh, as you all know we have alternating current supply at our homes but for example your mobile phone or your laptop needs dc dc supply for its charging or its working so basically we have a power converter there that converts this alternating current to direct current and uh, that's one example and of course most of your homes might be equipped equipped with uh, inverters when there is a loss of power so you may all know the basics of inverters again we have an energy conversion means we have the need of an energy conversion here means inverters uh, as your energy source you will be having a battery um, most probably a lead acid battery 12 volts so this battery stores means is is only able to provide dc um, dc voltage so if you need, your home uh, have equipments that works with alternating current so uh, again there is a need or there is a requirement to convert this form of energy in stored electrical energy in the form of dc to alternating energy so that it's uh, it's usable and it uh, suits the requirements moving on uh, we'll start as i said uh, we'll start with a little bit of history so the year is 1947 uh, everybody in india knows the importance of 1947 india gained independence and uh, another revolution also happened in the same year that was the invention of a small signal bjt so this bjt was invented in bell labs uh, bell labs is actually a research wing of an american conglomerate at&t so bell labs the name bell most of you might know uh, relates to alexander graham graham bell uh, the inventor of telephone so the bell labs at that time was focusing more on this telecommunication related fields and they required a device that could amplify signals or uh, their area of interest at that time was actually intercon intercontinental telecommunication and uh, they required a device to do it properly to do the amplification properly so there occurred a need for a new device and uh, they started working on this semiconductor devices and uh, three researchers at the bell labs john bardeen walter brighton and william shockley so william shockley was the basically the team lead or we can say the team lead of the research group there they came up with uh, the bjt so on the right side top right side you can see actually uh, their first uh, form i means whatever they created at that time so it's not it doesn't resemble what we see means so it doesn't resemble the picture we have in our mind when we think about the bjt so this was the first form and here you have a more detailed explanation of what are the means different different components we have 
physical components like springs and of course emitter collector and base as you may as you may already as you already know and uh, so this was the year that started a revolution in the field of electronics which led to power electronics so i'm moving on with the next slide then a really interesting story again about this uh, bell labs was that william shockley uh, the lead researcher that invented this transistor uh, he re uh, realized the importance of his invention means he re realized that this invention could revolutionize the industry electrical industry sorry electronics industry and uh, he went on with uh, went on to form a company shockley semiconductor and uh, he hired different different phd scholars experimental physicist uh, theoretical physicist everybody that he could find the best minds of that time from different different colleges as well as uh, different companies and uh, started this shockley semiconductor the issue with uh, william shockley was that he was kind of a strict leader so what happened was that uh, eight researchers mm, who were working under him left the shockley semiconductor company to form another uh, company based in uh, semiconductors that focuses on this uh, research and manufacturing of semiconductors particularly bjp called the fairchild semiconductors fairchild semiconductors uh, is now actually owned by a different company called own semiconductors but you may uh, this fairchild semiconductor company name might be familiar to i am i'm expecting i'm hoping this uh, name you guys might have heard um, somewhere so fairchild uh, company soon grew into a leader grew as a leader of the semiconductor industry and uh, another industry inter interesting fact is out of this fairchild semiconductor companies different different uh, companies uh, formed actually means uh, un under it or under the guidance or in collaboration companies like intel you may already know and amd and more and these are commonly referred as fair children so this eight researchers or this eight scientists who left the shockley semiconductor company to form this fairchild semiconductors is uh, called the traitors eight and here you can see the first logo of the fairchild semiconductor company and these are the eight members that left the shockley semiconductors and uh, this is the modern day logo of uh, fairchild semiconductors then so by the 1947 or the late 1940s bjt was invented and then uh, different different inve inventions also came out of the same bell laboratories like uh, first signal signal level mosfet was actually invented at the bell labs and uh, now we'll move on from this signal level components to power electronic components so i have named them the big five this might be the semiconductors means power semiconductor devices that you guys uh, usually come up with in your textbooks as well as elsewhere the first component that we will focus on is the power diode and uh, moving on from the power diode we have the silicon controlled rectifier so most of you might uh, interchangeably use silicon controlled rectifier the term scr as well as the thyristor it's okay to use that but we have to uh, understand the thyristor is actually a family name of uh, a group of semiconductors means you have at the same family you will have gto gate turn off uh, means gto is actually a part of a thyristor family and it, it is actually a modification of this first uh, silicon controlled rectifier and uh, then moving on we we'll have the power bjt the power mosfet and the igbt so mosfet you will know, know the mosfet stands for metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor and the igbt is insulated insulated gate by polar junction transistor so these are the symbols you might be familiar with this so this is a diode anode cathode and uh, this is the symbol for an scr again we have anode cathode and gate a third terminal we have and uh, 
actually mosfet there are different kinds of mosfet but but the most common mosfet that we are we are using is actually n channel mosfet and uh, that to n channel enhancement type mosfet so basically this is a symbol for that and uh, this is a igbt so uh, we'll have a little bit talk about uh, this different different power semiconductor devices so this power diode is actually also called pin diode so p and then most of you might be knowing and uh, i in pin diode is actually a term for intrinsic intrinsic means uh, in its means literal meaning is it's an or it's uh, in the original form in this particular case uh, what differentiates this power diode from a signal level diode is that a power diode will have as well as a you know a signal diode will have a uh, uh, n region that has more number of electrons uh, sorry not more number of electrons the number of electrons and protons in n region and p, p regions will be same but uh, n region will uh, is doped with the n type means uh, uh, doping is more with an n type semi uh, n type atom and the p side of the diode is uh, doped more with the p type atom or semiconductor so this intrinsic region uh, that differentiates the signal diode with the power diode is a lightly doped n region and we will use a notation like n minus region so basically we have a uh, heavily doped n region a lightly doped n minus region and on top of that we have a heavily doped p plus region so this gives the power diode its uh, larger reverse blocking uh, capability as well as its uh, ability to work in uh, means uh, ability to work in circuits that have that works with a higher potential basically electric circuits then uh, coming to scr scr and one more thing about this uh, diodes diodes are actually called uncontrolled devices because once you turn on them or else we can tell like uh diode will turn on when it's uh, when it's forward biased so we don't have an option there it means once we apply a positive signal to the p side and negative signal to the n side the diode will turn on automatically that's the nature of the device and uh, so we'll tell like it's uncontrolled coming to scr we'll have a gate terminal and what differentiates the scr from the diode is construction wise i'm not talking i'm talking about the control wise so scr we'll call the scr as a semi controlled device uh, most of you might have heard so a semi controlled device uh, the meaning in this uh, scenario is that scr we can turn on the scr by giving a positive signal to its gate with reference to its cathode but uh, it won't means we can't turn off the device so Uh, either uh, the scr has to naturally commutate for or the current through the through the scr should uh, come down below a particular value of current called holding current in order to uh, in order to the device to be turned off so we have control or turn on of the device so it's called semi control device and uh, moving on we'll have the power bjt so power bjt is is a fully controlled device and we can turn on the power bjt by applying a positive signal with respect to emitter at the base of the power bjt and uh, we can turn off the device by removing the signal so we have complete control over the turning on and turning off of the device so it's called fully controlled and uh, moving on power mosfets we have for power mosfets uh, uh, the terminals means it's gate Uh, if gate terminal will apply the positive signal with respect to the source it will turn on and uh, if you remove the signal from there means if it, or else we if we apply a negative signal it will turn off automatically same goes for igbts and uh, these devices are arranged in the you can see here arranged in the descending order of the age means this power diode was the first power semiconductor device to be invented 
followed by the SCR, power BJTs, and the MOSFET. And last, you can see IGBT is a uh, relatively new device compared to the rest of the power devices there. So, uh, so in the last slide, I have shown this power BJT, power MOSFET, and as well as IGBTs are fully controlled devices. But what differentiates the three devices means uh, what are the advantages of MOSFET or IGBTs and to, in what field BJT excels uh, the IGBT or MOSFET. So that's what we'll discuss next. So IGBT main difference uh, with respect to a MOSFET of an IGBT is it's low on state voltage drop means if the IGBT is conducting means if the IGBT is turned on and a particular current is flowing through the IGBT and you have a similar MOSFET and if you consider the same current is flowing through the MOSFET, the conduction loss in the MOSFET will be more than the conduction loss that occurs in the IGBT. So that's one major difference. And next is uh, IGBT. So design of uh, IGBT's gate driver circuit. This BJT is actually a current control device and IGBT is a voltage control device. So IGBT's uh, gate driver circuit design is relatively simpler when compared to that of a BJT. And uh, MOSFET's gate driver circuit and IGBT's gate driver circuits are somewhat the same, we can tell, uh, depending on the complexity. Then the IGBT can be easily controlled as well as the MOSFET. MOSFET can also be easily controlled. And uh, switching speed of the IGBT means Another uh, thing that we should consider when we are talking about this power devices, this power BJTs, power MOSFETs, and uh, IGBTs, is their switching speeds. So switching speed of an IGBT is inferior to that of a power MOSFET, but better than a BJT. So that's the difference. And so if you are focusing on the IGBT, we can tell like the inputs, looking from the input side, IGBT resembles, means IGBT has the characteristics of the input side of a MOSFET. And uh, depending on the output side or the current carrying capability or the on-state voltage, means on-state drop of the device, we can tell like it has, it resembles that of a BJT. So the IGBT has the advantage, means advantage of both MOSFET as well as the advantage of the BJT. So here you can see the IGBT small uh, is rated for a small voltage. And this is uh, more, uh, means this is another picture of an IGBT. So it might not look familiar to you, but uh, these are rated for more voltages and will have more power carrying capability or more current carrying capability. Moving on. So selection of IGBTs and MOSFETs. So in most power electronic circuits, uh, there will come a situation like we have to choose the device according to the rating or according to whatever uh, application of your circuit. circuit. So how to choose between them? So as I have told, IGBT, the advantage of IGBT is uh, or else we can tell like IGBTs, the main difference between IGBT and MOSFET when it comes to switching is that IGBTs will have uh, more switching losses and uh, MOSFET will have relatively low switching losses. And uh, the frequency at which we can switch a MOSFET uh, versus the frequency at which uh, if we can switch an IGBT, if we compare th those two, uh, we can see that up to 20 kilohertz IGBT is preferred means uh, frequency is relatively low switching frequencies in terms of switching frequencies and uh, MOSFETs can be considered when the switching frequency exceeds like 200 kilohertz like that and then the IGBT, IGBT is more suitable for high voltage applications means if you want to block high vol voltages when the device is off IGBT will prefer and uh, for du uh, low duty cycle operations, we'll also go with IGBTs. And uh, in devices that uh, that should handle or that is expected to handle 
high powers means uh, for example we can tell a variable frequency drive so vfd is uh, the power ratings of vfds will vary anywhere in between from means we have vfds in the market from 370 watts or um, 0.37 kilowatts up to nearly 1 megawatt so when the power approaches such a large number uh, the preferable choice always will be an igbt so again these are uh, different pictures of an igbt on the right hand side this might be a new picture to everybody I means so this is actually an open view of the igbt module that we have here so this is a semicron module actually we can tell it's a single igbt actually from here you can see it's an actually it's a half bridge module of this uh, a half bridge module igbt means it will have two igbts connected as given and uh, yeah and this is the opened view here but looking closely most of you might have noticed here we have four different sections that look similar so you might think there is a four, there are four igbts actually you are correct there are four igbts but for higher means this is rated for uh, more current so in order to carry more current what is done inside the sorry what is done inside the igbt is that we have parallel two igbts at the bottom and parallel two igbts at the top so that the uh, current handling capability doubles almost and uh, that's why we have four different similarly looking sections here and also most of you might have noticed there is an anti parallel diode means a diode is connected in anti parallel with respect to this igbt so actually this is not a body diode means for mosfets most of you might know mosfets inherently have a body diode means uh, that is part of its nature but igbt is doesn't have this body diode so why we have connected means if you again if you look closely here in a single section here you can see a big portion and a small portion so this uh, small portion is actually the anti parallel diode so why we have connected this diode in anti parallel so the point i want to emphasize is that this diode is actually not in an inherent part of the igbt structure this is an external physical a section that we have added in anti parallel and the reasons i will tell now so why we have connected the diode in anti parallel is that uh, the igbt is a unidirectional device means it can conduct only from collector to emitter so in order to have a reverse conduction means if you focus on this terminal and uh, we want current to flow from here to here so the only way possible means if there was no diode present the current uh, does not have any path to flow from this point to this point so we have connected a diode in anti parallel direction in uh, like in motor drives if you are looking at the inverter session section so you will see uh, the topology will be drawn like this means igbt you will be having as well as an anti parallel diode you will be having again uh, once more i am repeating this is not a body diode means this is not part of the uh, igbt igbt's uh, body or it's not an inherent diode this is an external device that we have connected in anti parallel direction so uh a little bit means again a little bit to the basics so uh some of you i have understood means students from first year to fourth year are there so a little bit confusion will be there when we talk about load means we will tell heavy load light load and again we will talk about impedance means high impedance we will talk low impedance we will talk so 
what is the relations Rela relation when we tell about heavy load most of you might have and uh, have a tendency to confuse it with means if you are if i present you with a circuit like this and i i will tell you if i tell you the load is very high uh maybe you might confuse what i mean is the resistance value r value is high and if i tell the load is light you might think uh, the initial thought that might come to your mind maybe the resistance value sorry resistance value r is low but actually a heavy load means with respect to a circuit the load is heavy means the circuit is drawing more current so again back to basic ohms law if you want more current to flow through a circuit then the impedance of the circuit should be low so never confuse this load and impedance and vice versa so if, if i tell the load is heavy then that means impedance is low and if i tell the load is light with respect to a circuit that means the impedance uh, that the our source is is high so again uh, i'll ask you a small question means uh, very basic question so we have two bulbs one is a 100 watt bulb rated at 230 volts and we have a 60 volt 60 sorry 60 watt bulb rated at 230 volts so my question is which bulb will have more resistance means everybody will know this 100 watt bulb will more uh, means will glow more brightly than 60 watt bulb but which will be having more resistance can anybody answer hello hope my audio is clear yes uh, the audio is clear yeah okay thank you i'll turn on the camera so once again hi so uh, my question was sorry we have we have two bulbs rated at uh, 100 watts and uh, with 230 volts and uh, we have a 230 volt means 60 watt bulb with uh, 230 volts so which will be which one will be having more resistance so that was my questions question so there's an answer in the chat box by kirti ramesh saying okay. 100 watt okay so uh so my question was which will be having more resistance so that's what uh means uh again i'll uh, explain it once more means 100 watt means what it means a heavy load or light load means with respect to 60 watts anyone means it's actually a basic question means even uh, 10th standard students can also answer means uh, which is a heavy load 100 watt or a 60 watt okay yeah um, thanks shilpa of course 100 watt is the heavy load so my question was with respect to this 100 watt means considering this 100 watt as well as 60 watt which will be having more resistance so as i have explained if the load is high that means the resistance means in this case of bulbs is bulb is not impedance because bulb we can represent by a resistor r so if the wattage is more that means the resistance is less so this 100 watt bulb will be having less means if you take a multimeter and measure the resistance of both these bulb, bulbs these resistance of both, both these bulbs you can uh, see that this 60 watt bulb will be having more resistance than this 100 watt bulb okay hope i am clear so 
this will be one of the few mistakes that you make means uh, without thinking the first question means the first answer that usually comes to your mind might be wrong so hope i am clear uh, in this in this so i'll uh, move on with the next slide yeah so now we'll start a bit uh, small discussion about converters or uh, we can tell switching circuits we will consider so i have given a circuit diagram here basic means uh, those who have studied power electronics might know so this is the circuit of a buck converter and uh, what i want to emphasize here is means if you are seeing a circuit like this if you are seeing a circuit like this so at first it might look to be a big circuit it will have a uh, inductor capacitor is there diode is there switch is there and uh, your your instinct might be to memorize means where this inductor where this capacitor is there and to draw it up um, on your exam so when you are studying any power electronic circuits what i want to uh, what i want to specify is that the focus uh, should not should not be on the device as such means a uh, buck converter will have a mosfet here most of you might know that so focus should not be on the mosfet just consider the mosfet as a switch so reduce the your circuit consider the mosfet as a switch so once you reduce your mosfet so one complexity is reduced right so you replace the symbol of the mosfet with a switch then it's easy from there a switch will have two states it might be open or it might be closed so draw two circuits means uh, one with the switch closed so when the switch is closed what will happen across this diode the diode will be will get reverse biased so the effect of the diode will won't be there so you can reduce your circuit whatever shown here and when the switch is open what will happen is the stored and due to the stored energy means when the switch is open of course the effect of the source won't be there because the source is actually open from the circuit <laughs> so what will happen is uh, the diode will come into action now <coughs> sorry so the diode will uh, will be in a free wheeling will act as a free wheeling diode and the stored energy through uh, in the inductor will be supplied back to our circuit so whenever you are dealing with uh, these kinds of uh, circuits means any power electronic circuit <coughs> excuse me for one so whenever you are focusing on any power electronic circuit just just remove the power electronic component from there replace it with the switch and from there you think and use your logic the switch will have two states it is open it is closed and from there you try to reduce your circuit to separate circuits if possible and from there you try to solve it. so next i want to emphasize on uh, the difference between an electronic circuit and a power electronic circuit or an electronic device or a power electronic device so this <coughs> graph uh, most of i most of you might be familiar with so this is the output characteristics of a bjt so what i want to focus is we have three regions here one is uh, an active region as you have seen whatever the color blue they have given and the green one is saturation region and at the bottom you can see the cut off region so what i want to emphasize here is a linear device or a linear bjt or we can tell a signal level bjt in an amplifier is designed uh, to work in this uh, active region means uh, means uh, an amplifier you guys might know we have a small signal and we want to amplify it uh, to a high amplitude so this only works when the device is operated in this active region we don't want the amplifier to saturate 
means what will happen if the amplifier saturates? You will give an input signal, and uh, you will expect the output also to rise. Means your input signal is increasing. You will expect uh, your output also to increase. But if the device is saturated, what will happen is uh, this relation uh, you guys will know I C by I B equal to beta. So this relation, this uh, linearity between I B and I C will not hold if the device enters into this uh, saturation region. And uh, this cutoff region also makes no sense. Means uh, you want to amplify a signal, and <coughs> you want to amplify a signal, and uh, if the signal as such you are removing, of course there uh, won't be any output. So if you want your signal to be uh, reproduced as such, your device should means you should make your device work in this active region. Coming to a power electronic device in a power electronic circuit, uh, if you are if you are consider a power electronic circuit, so what we can see is power semiconductor devices are actually operated in this cutoff as well as saturation region. We won't uh, make them operate in this active region because our circuit, this power electronic circuit, the inherent nature of the circuit is that we should have a device that acts as a switch. So switch, you guys will, uh, you guys know, a switch basically only has uh, two options. Means if the switch is either the switch is closed completely or the switch is open. So uh, when the power electronics, power electronic device operates in the saturation region, we can tell uh, that the switch is closed. And uh, if it operates in this cutoff region, we can tell like uh, the switch is open. So any power electronic device will make it to jump between this uh, cutoff region as well as uh, the saturation region. Uh, you guys, uh, you guys may know that uh, we want high frequency switching uh, for a MOSFET in a particular application. So, for uh, say, for example, a buck converter. So, we want to turn off the MOSFET, turn off the MOSFET, so turn on and turn off. So, we don't want, uh, we don't want to spend. Uh, more time in this active region. The longer we spend in this active region, the more uh, switching loss will uh, occur in the device. So that's the difference between uh, basic electronic means any electronic circuit and electronic circuit and a power electronic circuit. Once again, electronic circuits are designed to be operated in this active region, and a power electronic circuit are uh, power electronic devices are expected to operate means we want the device to operate in the saturation as well as this cut of region. Then uh, next we will move on with drives. So, uh, so, so this is the field that I work in means uh, I work in Danfoss. Danfoss is a company. Uh, it's based in Denmark actually. It has different different segments. Uh, I'll tell. Danfoss power solution is a segment in Danfoss, and we have Danfoss drive segment is there, then Danfoss heating segment, and uh, <coughs> Danfoss cooling segment is also there. So basically, four different segments uh, for Danfoss, and I work in a Danfoss drive segment. So the picture here actually is taken from the Danfoss website. So a variable frequency drive. Uh, these are all variable frequency drives. So here you can see small, small drives. So uh, these ratings will be in the order of 0.22 kilowatts or 0.37 kilowatts. And here you can see large drives, means uh, the measure lengthwise literally comes near five feet, we can tell. So these guys will be rated near a megawatt, <coughs> for example, 800 kilowatt. Or more than that. So this is actually what a variable frequency drive looks like. So different different terminologies are there for a VFD. So it's called some might call it as a frequency converter or a variable speed device. And next adjustable speed drive is there. Uh, but the most common terminology that uh, use that we use is uh, variable frequency drive in short VFD. 
and top players in uh, this drives business so the number one player in uh, drives in terms of market is abb abb is a swedish company uh, mo- most of you might be familiar with the name abb so next uh, <coughs> biggest company in terms of market is danfoss danfoss is based in denmark we have siemens siemens is a german uh, company then uh, yaskawa electric is there japanese uh, rokal automation from usa and uh, <coughs> another company is delta delta is based in taiwan so these are some of the top players in the drives business some more are there like allen bradley for example then uh, <coughs> a little bit about motors means i'm not going to talk about uh, dc motor is motor in classification and all that what i want to tell is electric motor when we think about electricity the most of the electricity that is generated it's a huge portion or a huge chunk of it is actually consumed by this electric motors <laughs> in every industry we have electric motor and uh, these account for nearly 45% of the energy produced means whatever energy is produced globally at each, at each and every second on an average 40% of that power is consumed by uh, the electric motors combined and the second uh, most demanding load is lighting so this comes around 19% so here you can see it's uh, like uh, it's more than twice the energy it means uh, whatever comes in the second place is lighting but motors consume more than twice that so motors are a huge consumers of this generated electric energy and we all live in a generation or we all live in a time where we want to reduce this uh, energy consumption where we want to reduce wastage of energy where all of us want to become means most of the companies are aiming for carbon neutrality like that so uh So drives what they usually do is if we have a system with a motor and I means same system we have one is with drives and without drive the total energy consumption of the system if you introduce or if you install a drive will increase I means sorry the energy consumption will decrease that means uh, the efficiency of the total system as as such will increase with a vft so like as like i have said the vft will save energy and improve the efficiency of the total system uh you guys might uh, have noticed new and new acs will have this uh, branding inverter technology and all. and uh, second one is uh, <coughs> drives are used in industry to match the speed of the equipment or speed of the motor with the means uh, with the process requirement or whatever a requirement is there and uh, also not only speed the torque can also be matched with the vfd and the vfd if you introduce in a system it will reduce the mechanical stress on the motor so we can have smooth acceleration smooth braking like, like that and the noise levels uh, means for example pa- fans and pumps if you use a vfd uh, they will come down so these are the advantages of vfd then we'll uh, move on to means uh, we'll take a closer look at the vfd so this is basically we can tell a block diagram of a vfd here we have the rectifier section then uh, an intermediate circuit we have an inverter we have on top of that we have a control unit that communicates between this uh, intermediate circuit inverter rectifier <coughs> and as well as uh, we can also means uh, interact with the drive means we can give commands through an hmi module or through a plc through this control circuit this control circuit is also responsible for generating the pwm waveforms for this inverter and the output from the inverter will feed it to a motor <coughs> so rectifier we have different different classifications uncontrolled is there semi controlled is there fully controlled and the next one is active front end type the active front means these three things they use a combination of diodes means i here we have only diodes here a combination of diode and thyristors here fully thyristors active front end is little bit different case here uh, we use 
instead of diodes or thyristors, we use IGBT itself as the front end uh, rectifier. And the main advantage is that uh, we can uh, feed back energy. Means if you have excess energy or if your motor is breaking and you have excess energy available at the circuit, we can feed the energy back to the grid. So the inverter function, you guys all know. And the intermediate circuit, why we are using an intermediate circuit is that we need to stabilize the deceiling voltage. A rectifier output will have a small, small ripples. Not small, actually. We'll have relatively, somewhat relatively big ripples. So we want to uh, reduce that so that we can feed a relatively smooth, stable waveform to our inverter circuit. So again, a closer look at the rectifiers. We have uncontrolled here. We can see only diodes, semi-controlled. We have uh, diodes as well as the bottom part is thyristors. And we have fully controlled uh, rectifiers is also there. Then this is the last type, active front end type. Here we have IGVTs. And this is the these are the various intermediate circuits used. The most common ones are these two. So here we have an inductor or DC choke and uh, common type of inverter that is found in any drive. This is basically a two-level inverter and uh, uses six IGBTs, as you can see. Just notice, uh, take a look here, means uh, the active front end as well as the inverter. Active front end, we use at the front end side to feed back energy from the DC <laughs> from our uh, system back to the grid. And here the inverter we use to feed our motor, uh, means to control basically to give uh, means basically to control the motor in whatever manner that we require. So uh, again, uh, focusing on the rectifier section, we have uh, you have seen different different types of rectifiers, uncontrolled, semi-controlled, like that. Why we need these different different types of rectifiers? So the issue is that we have a DC link here. Means after the rectifier. Here we have an intermediate circuit, and, in, and an intermediate circuit we have a capacitor for rippling, for smoothening out the voltage waveforms from the rectifier. So, when we uh, consider the high power drives, means the rating, if, if the drive rating is higher than 37 kilowatt, then we won't uh, use a simple diode rectifier. The reason is, these big drives, we have big, big filtering capacitors. And uh, uh, if you use a simple diode rectifier, the entire voltage, the DC voltage will come across this uh, big capacitors. And uh, you might know what, uh, what will happen if you suddenly apply a DC voltage to a uh, capacitor. It will act as a short circuit. So, we want somewhat of a pre-charging circuit so that the charging of the capacitor is actually done gradually and then the full uh, DC voltage is applied to the capacitor. So we use uh, semi-controlled uh, rectifiers at that time. We'll control the firing angle of the thyristors. We'll, uh, means, uh, we'll, first we'll across the diesling, we will produce low voltage, then slowly we will increase the firing angle and uh, then we later we will apply the full voltage to the diesling so that we have a smooth charging of the diesling capacitors. So active friend and I have already told you uh, certain drive applications, the motor will act in this generating mode and we want to feed, we don't want to waste this energy. That's one case. And uh, next is if this energy is trapped in this diesling, the diesling voltage will have a tendency to shoot up and this will damage our capacitors. So we need to get rid of the energy. And uh, one way of doing this efficiently is uh, by using an active front end type uh, rectifier section. So another advantage of the AFE is that it will uh, produce low harmonics. So these are again some diagrams. Uh, again, this is an IGBT module. Here you can see a, again a rectifier module here. Both of them looks 
similar, but this is an IGBT module and this is rectifier modules. And for small, small drives, what we have is we have uh, entire uh, rectifier, three-phase rectifier and entire diode in a single package. So we have small boxes like this that we have a rectifier as well as an inverter all together in this one package. So before joining the industry, what I used to think is that every diode or every IGBT is a separate physical component. And if you want to make an inverter, we need to join, join a different, different IGBTs together and different, different diodes together to solder or to some sort of wire. But it's not that, it's not case. It's not that case, actually. Uh, we have entire packages from semiconductor manufacturing companies uh, that we have a diode in a rectifier section as well as an inverter section in completely one package. Also, we have uh, this half bridge module I have shown you earlier that open degree also I have shown you. And this is a rectifier module. Here you can see that actually it's a semi-controlled rectifier module. One is the tyrosol and the next one is the diode. And these are the means terminals for giving uh, triggering supply, uh, triggering signals to the SCR. And here you can see again, uh, few small terminals are there. The, those, are of, um, those are for providing gate signals to this IGBT. So next I want to talk about power factor. So power factor is also one of the few things that most of you might confuse. In linear circuits, or um, uh, in linear circuits, like shown here, everybody will know power factor. They will tell cos phi. That is correct. But then coming to a non-linear or non-sinusoidal circuits. So again, once again, non-sinusoidal circuit or a non-linear circuit is that the input will apply a sine wave, but the output might be, uh, so, sorry, the current might not look sinusoidal. The current will have harmonics. If uh, you apply a sinusoidal voltage and if you measure the current and the current is having ha harmonic content in it, then we can tell the uh, circuit or the system is a non-linear device. Uh, for example, every means variable frequency drives are actually uh, non-linear devices. And uh, when talking about power factors in these non-linear devices or these non-linear circuits, actually the true power factor, we talk about different, different power factors. There. We have a true power factor. We have displacement power factor as well as distortion power factor. I'm not going into the details, but uh, the true power factor is actually the product of displacement as well as distortion power factor. So don't confuse uh, these uh, power factors in nonlinear circuits with the power factor at uh, non-linear uh, circuits. Uh, the power factor in linear circuit will be cos phi, where phi is the phase angle difference between voltage and current, but uh, gives special uh consideration when uh, dealing dealing with this uh, nonlinear circuits here. So this is an example of harmonics. See the current when we are feeding the sinusoidal voltage to a circuit, we have a non-sinusoidal response of current. This is actually a load, uh, sorry, input current drawn by a six-phase rectifier on a three-phase AC supply, and uh, we can uh, again split this. Uh, Sinus means non sinusoidal waveform in which different different parts with Fourier series and all. And uh, one other thing is one other interesting thing about this uh, harmonics is that uh, this variable frequency drives they will have odd harmonics and also in the order of uh, 5, 7, 11, 13, like that. Now you can read more about that. I'm not going into details. And Everybody knows the harmonics is a bad, bad thing, but why it is considered such bad thing is harmonics. We can look into that. There are actually two negative effects of uh, harmonics, we can tell. Uh, harmonics will contribute to system losses. System losses means uh, the distribution system we are talking about here. And cabling losses will be more, the transformer heating issues will be there, or it might oversaturate issues will happen like that. And uh, harmonic voltage distortion causes disturbances to loads and increase losses in other loads. So that is also one other issue. And also another thing is uh, the current harmonics in a system, what it will do is it will pass, if it is left unchecked, it will pass through your uh, transmission system or your distribution system. And it will 
uh, of course the harmonic condens means third harmonic condens will be there fifth harmonic will be there these all will cause voltage drops so in effect the current harmonics will cause voltage harmonics in your system and uh, just imagine means i am working at danfoss so danfoss is injecting more harmonics in the into the grid system so actually i'm um, uh, my location is actually chennai so to left of our to the left of our uh, company we have royal enfield uh, manufacturing plant is there and to the right we have uh, komatsu it's again a japanese brand i think so that uh, they manufacture big mining uh, industrial grade trucks ex excavators like that so to the left and right we have different different industries so if danfoss is producing more harmonics or causing more current harmonics so what it will do is actually this current harmonics in uh, it will results in what voltage harmonics and it will cause disturbances to other users that are connected to the uh, point of common coupling means uh, danfoss will be getting energy from somewhere royal enfield will be getting from somewhere and uh, due to da uh, due to the uh, harmonics produced by danfoss the other companies their power quality will also reduce so next a uh, small discussion about dc link uh, it's only what our we have discussed so far we have the dc link uh, this is the common uh, dc link that we will see dc link capacitor alone uh, actually this is not the common what we usually see in drives is we have this dc chokes with respect to connected like this uh, to the dc link uh, inductor so this dc chokes they will have different different function one is actually they help in reducing the input side harmonics and uh, it's actually not one uh, big capacitor uh, so we have capacitor banks so this is actually the wiring diagrams from consider this is actually uh, capacitors from a danfoss drives the circuit i have used for another purpose actually we interconnect these capacitors through bus bars not not through the small wires and all and uh, for example if it, this uh, diode is rated for 450 volts and we want a 900 volt handling capacity for the dc link of course we will connect two capacitors in series so that 450 plus 450 equals 900 and uh, another issue if you connect go on interconnecting capacitors like this is uh, capacitor balancing balancing issues will come balancing means uh, if two capacitors are connected in series and uh, we want means we know the voltage across the capacitor is 500 volt and through aging what will happen is the voltage division between this individual capacitors they will vary so one might Uh, one might be at 100 volts and then another one might be at 400 volts so this is a failure mode actually so we want always the voltage whatever appears across the dc link to be split equally between these capacitors means if 500 is there we want it to be 250 and 50 so for that also in drives we are using different different balancing circuits so for example active balancing is there passive balancing is there and uh, as i have discussed we have pre charging circuits for uh, big drives uh, for uh, slowly uh, bringing up the capacitor to its required voltage and this is a diagram of a variable frequency drive so a uh, dc link will also support will also have uh, this dc link uh, smps will also be will also get power from the dc link and we will have a 24 volt output voltage and again uh, this is an inverter section uh, this is assembles and uh, again about this free wheeling diode uh, we have a free wheeling diode as i have discussed earlier connected in anti parallel and uh, these are different different inverter uh, means output voltage as well as output current waveform so this is the a uh, usual two level inverter output voltage and uh, this is the output current and here you can see a measured value of output voltage output voltage here with an oscilloscope then next thing is how do we measure this output voltage means uh, output voltage actually looks like this and if you want to measure the output voltage 
if you go on with an ordinary multimeter and if you plug in the multimeter terminals to the output of the a variable frequency drive it will show actually a wrong reading uh, so why this happens is because here also you can see the output voltage will have harmonics in it so what we are focusing or actually what the actual work doing component in this output voltage is the fundamental component uh, if fundamental component of a particular frequency means if the motor is working at full speed if it's a 50 hertz motor it will be 50 hertz so that's the fundamental frequency is only uh, the component that we are focusing on so if you want to go on and measure the output voltage means if you get a job in this power electronics industry and uh, somebody asks you to measure the output voltage of a drive don't just take any multimeter we want a multimeter with this low pass filter function here you can see see the output voltage and the frequency of the motor without the filter is incorrect means it will show high voltage reading in reality only 222.4 volts was there but if you are not using this low pass filter function then it will show a high output voltage so coming to the conclusion uh, there are different different companies in the power phonics field uh, one more thing i want to tell is there are different different companies means so b2b companies are there and b2c companies are there so b2b stands for business to business and b2c is uh, business to customer so b2c example maruti suzuki hyundai or daimler or all b2c customers b2c companies means their product will reach the customer directly but b2b company means uh, means a manufacturer of manufacturer of a variable frequency drive is actually a b2b company it means uh, none of you might be having a vfd it means there is no need of vfd at your home this vfd is required by an industry or a different uh, company uh, means pony uh, elevator companies are there they need uh, this variable frequency drives for the control of their motor so danfoss abb uh, and all companies that are producing these drives they will sell this uh products not to customers but to uh, either industry or uh, any other uh, oems means original equipment manufacturers like the elevator companies and all so the, here is a small list uh, actually power electronics is a very growing industry and has a lot of scope and is it is expected to grow in a fast pace and uh, g abb danfoss aptiv bosch you can see uh, different different i have already listed a few industries actually and uh, here you can see the electric vehicle manufacturing industries also requires power electronic engineers so this uh, getting a job in this power electronic industry uh, talking about that so the industry will expect you to have some uh, uh, expect you to be competent in some fields for like for for, uh, for example industry uh, will Uh, means they will consider candidates who are proficient in the simulink matlab simulink as well as simscape because uh, if you are working in the r and d division of a particular company you want to do simulations so the simulation tools you might you must be familiar with and uh, the basics of electronic circuits is also really necessary means even though uh, danfoss we can tell it's a power electronic industry or ge is a power electronics means ge drives are there they are dealing in power electronics that doesn't means that doesn't mean there are uh, electronic components in there there are of course electronic components in any device so this opamps linear, linear electronics and all you must know the basics then uh, start a habit about uh, a, for means give more focus on the data sheets of device means uh, any igbt so most what you can find just give a read and uh, just find uh, different different technical terms that they are using in the industry and of course uh, as i have discussed the difference between igbt mosfets and how to choose between them when you are designing a circuits and uh, just uh, know about the basics of every converter circuits means buck is there boost like that just the basics then also uh, an mtech will help you in the area of power electronics if you are uh, interested in uh, doing a job in power electronics and the mtech different types of mtechs are there one is industrial oriented mtech and research oriented is there 
so doing an industrial oriented mtech will uh, actually help you in my experience uh, means getting an internship or uh, getting a job directly in a, an industry also when you are selecting a college just uh, check the past placement records in what are all the companies that visited the college during the past year or during the past so and so years and uh, make a wise decision so that's it from my side i thank you all for listening uh, to this session um once again thank you dear participants if there are any questions please post them in the chat box or you can unmute yourselves and ask so there there was a uh, question in the chat box saying that if you could share the website link means uh, website link to danfoss uh, i think so so yes sir sure. any other questions from anyone Is anything technical, non-technical related to work like that? So there's a question in the chat box by Anson. Which so, are the core companies in power electronics industry, sir? So the core companies means uh, what I have what I have discussed earlier means uh, this power electronics companies. Uh, most of them are direct. b2b tech companies so they will have a product and they will uh, sell it to another companies or these companies are uh, called uh, oems so core companies in the power electronics industry i can tell like uh, the companies that manufacture uh, variable frequency drives as i have listed previously uh, like danfoss and all abb ag is there and uh, other companies for example active aptiv is a company Uh, that actually manufactures this infotainment systems and all for uh, companies like daimler bmw and all means uh, you will have this infotainment systems um and uh, for this climate control entertainment and all so dan for um, sorry uh, this uh, bmw and daimler is actually not making that that is actually made by different companies and they will sell it to means of course there will be a specification from the manufacturer and they will uh, sell it to them so active is a different company uh yeah that's uh, basically the uh, companies that i know about any other questions I hope there are no more questions. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for the wonderful session. Okay, once sure again. Thank you. Yeah. Of about the importance of power electronics and the career opportunities in the power electronics industry. It was a really inspiring session. Thank you for taking your time, in spite of your busy schedule, to attend this session. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, sir. thank you participants for attending this session and, and being with us throughout the entire 3 days of technophilia and making this a success i request all participants to fill the feedback form provided in the chat box now for the most awaited part the pressure hunt i invite shruti 
treasurer of IEEE SBMBCT to present the rules about treasure hunt. Participants the Google slide link will be provided in the chat box. And there is a clue in the IEEE SP Embassy Instagram page, okay? And you are, only one submission is allowed. And you can take time till 11.59 p.m. Please fill out the feedback form. Thank you, Shruti. Thank you, participants. Have a great evening.